So let's start with the movie Oppenheimer. And and some of the things that will bring it to life. If you happen to be um, at the museum when we took it on the road here recently, and by the way, I'm uh, having meetings hopefully next month with uh, some companies that will help us take it on the road all next year so it can be seen all over the country. It is truly remarkable. And I want to just show you, uh, this was just one small section uh, of the World War II section, and it it revolves around everything that Oppenheimer did. Um, when we dropped the bomb, uh, we had no idea what it was going to do. We have now in the collection, and this was just um, purchased, so we don't have the physical object with me, and I can't give you the the full... Um, I can't read you the whole thing uh, because I don't have it yet. But it was a, a letter uh, to his mom and dad. Uh, he was the co-pilot of Enola Gay. He also was asked to keep a calendar, a, you know, a, a TikTok, if you will, minute by minute, what was happening. And I've read the original, and it is unbelievable. But let me give you the summary of it here because I don't have the original. Briefing at 2400, eating at 0030, mom and dad. We started engines at 0227. We taxied out and took off at 0235. We then got off the ground at exactly 245. At the last minute before takeoff, our cruising altitude had been changed, which means possibly a rougher trip. Starting out as an uneventful flight, he then continues to record as the bomb technicians make the final adjustments to the bombs. At 0320, items 1 through 11 were completed by Captain Parsons. In an echo of his hope to fly the mission and his resentment of being relegated to co-pilot, he says Colonel Tibbetts has been hard at work with the usual tasks that belong to the pilot of a B-29. As the hours count down, he begins to write, and now everything is in the dark. There, is, there are no lights inside the B-29. They don't want any indication that this plane is up. He begins to write everything in the dark, and you can see sometimes his handwriting is very slanted and goes into other lines. By, zero five, uh, by zero 0552, it's beginning to be real light outside. Then, climbing to 9,000 feet, we'll stay here until we're about an hour away from the Empire. Then, the bomber makes a rendezvous with two other B-29s equipped with uh, observation and photographic gear. Together, the three aircraft climb to an altitude of 30,000 feet. Everyone will be relieved when we have left our bomb and get halfway home. Better yet, all the way home. At 0730, he writes, we are loaded. The bomb is now alive. It's a disturbing and funny feeling knowing it's right in back of you. Now, at this point, Hiroshima has been identified as the primary target. Two secondary targets had also been selected in the event of unfavorable weather conditions. The two scout planes radio back information on the conditions uh, you know, cloud conditions, et cetera, et cetera, over the targets. We just received a report that our primary is the best target. So we will make a run on Hiroshima. Right now, we're 25 miles from the Empire. Finally, the crews were in place, and it was time to execute the mission. Quote, there'll be a short intermission while we bomb our target. This was followed by a brief blow-by-below description of the bomb run, culminating in the detonation at 8.16.02 a.m. For the next minute, no one knew what to expect. The bombardier and the right seat jockey, or pilot Tibbs, both forgot to put on their dark glasses and therefore witnessed the flash, which was terrific. Fifteen seconds after the flash, 
there were two very distinct slaps on the ship. Then there was all the physical effects that we felt. We then turned the ship so we could observe the results. And there in front of our eyes was it, without a doubt, the greatest explosion man has ever witnessed. He then on the paper draws what he saw. Struggling for words at this minute, he finally continues. I am certain the entire crew felt this experience was more than any human had ever thought possible. It just seems impossible to comprehend. Just how many did we kill? I honestly have a feeling of groping for words to explain this. Or I might say, my God, what have we done? If I live a hundred years, I'll never quite get those few minutes out of my mind. That's from the co-pilot of the Enola Gay, the little boy mission, number one. We did it again. But we did something else before we dropped this bomb. Because of Oppenheimer... Because they had seen it, and they did not ever want it dropped. Harry Truman knew if we drop this bomb, it will mean that uh, we'll probably come to an end of this war, and it will actually save lives. Because the, the uh, Japanese had been convinced by the emperor that we were savages, and that we were worse than uh, their worst nightmare. And remember, they were, I believe, the Japanese in China were worse than the, the uh, Germans with the Jews. They were, they just slaughtered them in just such brutal, brutal ways. Um, they were just, they weren't people, just like the Germans didn't see Jews as people. But because Oppenheimer saw what could be done and all of the scientists involved knew the destructive power, they made Truman a deal. You can only drop this if you warn the people. And so if you're watching Blaze TV, Pat will hold up. Uh, how many do you have? One or two? I have two. Uh, one, the okay. first one is the uh, the planes dropping bombs on one side. So, like a yes. photograph of that. Uh, and on the flip side of that are the words that they sent to the Japanese. So, in other words, uh, this is coming your way. And then they tell them what to do about it. Right. They say, we're, you're not our enemies. Uh, we're picking these 10 cities. And in the next 10 days we will drop a bomb of more destructive power uh, than is imaginable. And please leave. You're not our enemy. Take food and water with you. We dropped 70 million on 10 cities before we dropped each bomb. 70 million leaflets. Nobody had ever done that wow. ever in the history of the world. But nobody in the history of the world had ever seen anything like the atomic bomb. What else do you have there? Uh, it looks like a Japanese family on one side. Um, yes. And, and then saying the same thing. Saying the same thing on the other side. Yeah. Telling them to get out. So we get have, out of Dodge. Yeah. We, we, have, uh, we have several uh, of those um, uh, leaflets. And that's not something I was ever taught when I was in school. So we drop the bomb. And let me show you the first bomb in Hiroshima. We have, do you have just regular coins? These are just yeah. Japanese coins. Mm -hmm. So yep. hold those up to the camera. These are just, just okay, just normal coins. Yeah. Like three of them. Just teeny, teeny. Tiny. Yeah, they're like pennies or dimes. Yeah. Smaller even than a penny. Um, yeah. So th they were, that, those are the Japanese coins that would have been on somebody's desk or at a bank. But there was a stack of coins. Um, we don't know where, but there was a stack of coins at Hiroshima, all stacked up. When the, when the blast hit, uh, it fused a stack of coins together.
Mm-hmm. Maybe and there's 10 of them are here, or 15, something like that, and they're yeah. all fused. And they're from the heat. All just fused and, yeah, burned. Shh. We have, show the regular marble, uh, Pat. Mm-hmm. There was a marble at uh, Hiroshima, and that's the regular. It's just like a big Aggie, mm-hmm. right? Doesn't have an American flag in it, but uh, just a big Aggie. Now, this is the same marble that was within the blast site, and it has just been exploded from the inside. It's 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 a little bigger inside too, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Pat. Yeah, it's quite a yeah. bit bigger. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and it just uh, the heat just exploded it from the inside. It's crazy looking. Amazing. So Hiroshima didn't work, so we had to do it again. Little boy was mission number one. Fat man was number two. And we dropped leaflets. You've never seen the size of Jesse, uh, Jeffy. He's enormous. He will kill everybody in the area. Um, oh, no, it was a different f- uh, fat boy. Uh, so <laughs> fat boy, we dropped over Nagasaki. What most people don't know is the history of Nagasaki. So I think one of the more incredible things we have in our collection um we have the bombs away uh faceplate from the enola gay um given to a gentleman from uh captain tibbets years ago uh and he described watching the light right above the bombs away but we also have something from uh nagasaki Nagasaki was the second city to be hit. Most people don't know Christianity was banned in Japan up until about 1900. Nagasaki was the hideout for Christians. Uh, It had become the underground Christian uh, area of Japan. And when they made it legal to be Christian, uh, they built a giant Catholic church, a a, uh, cathedral there. That cathedral was only about a thousand yards away from Ground Zero. If you look for it online, you should you should look for it. It is incredible. You look for it online. It is a massive cathedral. They were in prayer uh, and having mass at the time, uh, and it was really pretty much completely vaporized. You can see where one of the towers kind of was, but everything else is just gone. There was a bell in the bell tower. It survived, and uh, it is now in the Remembrance Park in Nagasaki. And I believe they ring that bell uh, every year as a reminder. There was one other bell that survived that same church and it's a lot smaller and I'm doing our investigation on it right now. So we're not sure if this is accurate, but we believe this was uh, one of the communion bells. So when communion would be uh, served, it would be rung. The bells uh, would ring. And this is one of the bells. This is the only other bell that survived from that church. Can you read what it says on it? Uh, Angelus Nagasaki. Yeah, and it's in Japanese on the other side. And it is uh, stained, they think, from the blast. Would you hold it up and ring it, Pat? Yeah. Uh, It doesn't have a ringer, so. Oh, did you guys take out the ringer? Uh, I put the ringer in. Yeah. No, JP, no get, go get the ringer, would you, and put it back in. I know we don't want to ring it very often, but I think it's yeah, I think it's it appropriate as we're talking about this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. You know how to put that in there? This was, I've tried to get that bell for 15 years. Still rings, even after uh, having been through an atomic blast. Pretty amazing. Yeah. 
Mm. And by the way, uh, the reason why I'm not holding these up or showing them or even in the room is we haven't had any radi- radiation check on it yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that yeah, no, that helps. so i'm that sure helps. pat yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure it's, it's fine <laughs> it's fine yeah yeah <laughs> you know we don't actually we have not done a geiger counter <laughs> test we just all assumed no, they're, they're these fine. things we should you're fine, of course. What was it they always Who's got said? a Geiger counter? You'd have to you'd have to vacate the area for ten thousand oh. years before things are not radiated yeah. anymore. It's been what seventy? Right. That's pretty close. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty close. close. And we washed it. You're wearing you're yeah, wearing got clothes rubber on. gloves. <laughs> yeah. So. Stand so. up and look at your chair. Is there an x-ray burned into your chair? <laughs> <laughs> Big outline of my butt cheeks uh, on the chair. Yes. Uh, yeah. Isn't that great? That's... You know, it's, <sighs> what's so amazing is those of us who are older and grew up in the era of the Cold War and the bombing and, and everything else, and our, uh, my parents and grandparents remembered the bomb, there was a healthy respect for the danger of that kind of weapon. Now it just seems to be like, hey, they might use nuclear weapons. And nobody seems to really talk about the grand effects of using a nuclear weapon. It's a little disturbing. Maybe we should maybe we should take our kids to Oppenheimer and uh, make sure they understand the ramifications.